Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 575. Why you absolutely need to take oral vitamin D3. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Vitamin D is something that I talk to every one of my patients about. It is the one supplement that I think that everyone in North America should take because we don't get enough vitamin D from the sun. As you move from the equator to the North Pole, you get less and less and less vitamin D uh, through your skin every day. And most of us stay inside most of the time, work inside, so we don't get vitamin D when we are actually not working. We're inside our houses or inside a building. In general, we don't spend our day outside unless we're farming, and there's not that many of us that are getting that kind of vitamin D. It is, vitamin D is actually a hormone called (laughs) colocalciferol. Try to say that three times. Um, It's required for your health, for your bones, Uh, It makes muscle, it supports your immune system, it protects you from cancer, it supports your brain function, prevents dementia, Uh, it protects you from diabetes, heart disease, and um, acts to assist your body in absorbing calcium that you have in your food, absorbing it through your stomach into, into your bloodstream. It also helps absorb zinc from your food, which we usually don't have enough of either, Um, And zinc is very important for every single enzymatic reaction in our bodies. So one vitamin, if you take enough of it, which should be about 5,000 milli-international units a day in oil form, should be enough to support you and keep you healthy and prevent many of these diseases if you keep up on it. Now, the problem with supplements is it's not a prescription, so you have to go buy it when you run out. And a lot of my patients say, yeah, I took that for two months, and it ran out, and so I quit taking it. That's not something you can say about vitamin D. You need to take this every day. Um, The government's been talking about what the normal vitamin D level is for uh, blood level. And uh, probably 15 years ago, when I was still practicing, well, 20 years ago now, I was practicing OBGYN. They were trying to decide on a normal blood level. They went from 20 to 30, to 40, to 50, and they, we, they've now come up with 30 to 100 being a normal level. I think it should be 40 to 100. So when you get a blood test that tells you if you have enough vitamin D, you should be between 40 and 100. Not, And if you're close to 100, you should maybe just take your vitamin D five days a week. So that is one of the things. Vitamin D is an oil-based vitamin, not like vitamin B. It is more like vitamin A, And vitamin E and vitamin D are all oil-based and can be overdosed. So you don't want to take too much. 5,000 units a day is probably the max for most of us. So that would be my, that's my recommended dose to my patients. And um, you can also get vitamin D in your, in milk. They, they put vitamin D in milk. Uh, It also is naturally found in salmon, in egg yolks in fortified foods such as orange juice and other milk products like yogurt. But vitamin D2 is what they put in the foods, and it's not very potent, and it doesn't work as well as the supplement vitamin D3. Now, most of my patients say, oh, well, I just go outside and I get vitamin D. Well, most of my patients also use full-body sunscreen, which blocks vitamin D. Not only blocks your tan, but it also blocks vitamin D. So... If you are a sunscreen addict, you should probably go out in the sun for an hour before you put your sunscreen on, just so you get some vitamin D and the other good things that the, that the sun can do for you, and then block any burning rays after that. But you need to have some sun. But here's the interesting part about vitamin D and your skin, skin color. People who tan easily and people who ha- have naturally dark or black skin 
um, do not absorb vitamin D from the sun. They have very low vitamin D levels, which is dangerous, which makes people with darker skin higher risk for all the diseases I told you vitamin D prevents. It is, it's one of the things I think we developed as we um, went through many generations. You know, we all started, all of us started in Africa, we, and some of us migrated north to Europe, and then to um, Asia, and Russia, and, to, and across uh, different land bridges that used to be on our, on our uh, topography before the ocean covered them. So we started with dark skin. As we got closer to the, to the north and to the south pole, we did not have as much melanin. We, did, we actually we, we mutated less, less uh, melanin, and we didn't do as well with less light if we had darker skin, because then our vitamin D levels were even worse. So what happens is, if you have, a dark, if you have dark skin, you're being protected from an overdose of vitamin D from the sun. As you get darker, you absorb less vitamin D. So if somebody's outside all the time and they're very tan, or if they're Mediterranean heritage, uh, African heritage, I'm half Italian, so in the summer I'm very dark, uh, I'm not absorbing much vitamin D. So I have to take it because I'm not going to get it through my skin even if I stay outside all day and, because I have dark skin. It's not going to absorb. So that's the interesting part is that the darker your skin, the more vitamin D is necessary for you. And all of my patients, I tell to take vitamin D because we live in Missouri and our latitude is relatively high, very little um, sunlight overall during the year. So I tell my patients to take vitamin D instead. But my dark skin patients, doesn't matter how much sun is out there, you're not going to absorb it. They have to take it every day. So that's very important if you want to avoid these illnesses. So what does vitamin D really do? Um, it's essential to your immune system, which is why several tests have been done during this pandemic that showed that vitamin D helped support the immune system and help protect people from getting severe COVID. Uh, that has been in the journal of the AMA, and it is well supported in mainstream medicine. So vitamin D is also necessary for building bone and muscle. So your bones are, um, I've, I've described this before, but your bones aren't like what people think, like your bones grow and are there for the rest of your life and it's kind of dissolve over time as you get older. That's not what they are. Your bone is, is a hard substance, but it is always making bone and dissolving bone. When we lose our testosterone, lose our estrogen, or don't have enough vitamin D or vitamin C, our bones dissolve more than they build. So that gives us osteoporosis. And over time, women, after menopause, when their estrogen's low, their testosterone's low, they lose a, a percentage of their bone, 1% per year. People who smoke lose more. People who have low vitamin D lose more and have more severe osteoporosis over time. So osteoporosis can even start early if you've taken Lupron or um, in, infertility drugs, those often cause osteoporosis or endometriosis drugs, they cause osteoporosis as well. So there are other people, oh, and steroids also cause osteoporosis. So a lot of these different medications we give people have the side effect of thinning the bones. So you can still be young and have had thick bones when you were 30, but if you take all these drugs, or some of them, then you may end up with osteoporosis when you're 40. And that happened to me. I was on Lupron, um, several uh, courses of Lupron, and they say you should only be on two, but for endometriosis, I think I was on four or five times. And because of that, my bones thin. And when I did an osteoporosis screen when I was in my early 40s, I found out that I had honestly... I was like just a tiny bit below true osteoporosis. Now, I didn't take any medicine for that except for vitamin D, vitamin C. I exercised. I used a resistance training, and it kept me stable at that point until I started. I had a hysterectomy, and I started my estrogen and testosterone. When I started that plus the vitamin D and the calcium, I then started to build bone. And in two years, I was back. So it does require hormonal support. If you have your own hormones, great. But if you don't, you need to replace them to work with vitamin D and vitamin C 
so that, and vitamin K2 to build bone. So some patients think, oh, well, I'm just going to take vitamin K2. I'm not going to take anything else. Well, that's like having a plant and not watering it. So it's going to die. So if you don't give it, if you don't give your plant vitamin D, then your plant's going to die. If you don't give it hormones, it's going to die. I mean, basically, this is a group project. You need to have all of the elements of your bone to replace what, basically, when you were young, you didn't even have to think about. So if you have your own hormones, great. But if you don't, you need to replace them to make your bones completely um, solid and not break when you just fall off the curb. That's the first sign of osteoporosis. If you've broken something and someone hasn't done a bone density on you, you need to go get a bone density all on your own because you most likely, if you've had a fracture from just falling off a curb or something that's not a severe uh, impact auto accident, you need to know whether you have osteoporosis or not and you need to fix it. I am not a fan of bisphosphonates like, like uh, Fosamax. They do not build strong bone. They just build dense bone on x-ray. So they look strong. They make the, the bone density test look good, but they still break if you fall off the, off the curb. So I don't recommend those to anybody. Some people need a hormone called parathyroid hormone, and that sometimes is, is an answer to this. If that's their problem, then just giving vitamin D and calcium, K2, and vitamin C is not going to be the answer. So you have to fix what your problem is. Initially, I usually try to give a patient everything they need to build bone and tell them to do resistance training, even if it's just with rubber bands that you put under your feet and you do your biceps and triceps and, you know, you, you do exercises with your whole body with a rubber band, that's still resistance training. And that will build bone. You also need to have good muscle. So after we lose our testosterone... Um, in our late 40s or our middle 40s, women lose it then, men lose it at 55 and up. After we lose our testosterone, then our bones start not being active. They don't burn calories. They start shrinking and going away, and we replace them with fat. That is something that can be reversed with hormones and vitamin D, but vitamin D is absolutely necessary to keep your muscle fibers active and healthy and growing, and they are also a dynamic organ. They grow and they break down. Did you know that when you work out, like if you work out with weights for an hour, then you have broken down muscle, and that muscle goes into your bloodstream, and, and you actually excrete those pieces of muscle through your bloodstream. And then if you have testosterone slash um, DHT, those two components of testosterone, you will then build muscle. Well, if you want to build good muscle, you better have vitamin D there too. So vitamin D is necessary for, um, for building muscle and bone. And part of what's wrong with us when we get old and we get rickety and we get fragile, when people look at you and they can tell that you're old, is when you don't have any muscle mass and that you look skinny and your skin's hanging off of you. That is that's fragility. That makes you, um, not frigidity, fragility. That makes you uh, look like you're going to break if you bump into something. And that's how people view you. They'll view you as old. Even if your brain is fine, they'll view you as old if you do not have, if you're not able to look like you've got good muscles and bones. So that also affects us socially and um, psychologically. Another thing that ha that is a huge problem right now is type 2 diabetes. It affects 50% of our population, and prediabetes, even more, uh, even another 10 to 15%. So it's usually because we have a terrible diet. We eat too many carbs, junk food, processed foods, we, and we don't exercise. We're not outside, but it's also because we have a low vitamin D. So if you don't want to have type 2 diabetes, it's not just one thing but you have to add vitamin D, 5,000 units, to your diet every day to help prevent insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes. And um, then stop the carbs. No more soda. Soda is like the worst worthless food that you can eat. So that is one of the things that I advise my patients who have diabetes in their family or have prediabetes. They have to be on weight. They have to be on a good diet, a good, healthy, whole food diet, 
and they have to exercise with weight training, and they have to take their vitamin D, calcium, magnesium, the other things that, that your muscles need to grow and your bones need to grow. So the most recent information out is, is very um, helpful. And that is most of us die of heart disease because we live a longer life and that's what gives out at the end. But vitamin D replacement can stop or decrease the high risk of heart disease in people with dark skin. So we found that people who have low vitamin D levels for whatever reason, whether it be their dark skin or that they don't get vitamin D in their diet, have a much higher rate of heart disease and death. So if you want to prevent that, you take vitamin D, the same thing I've been talking about to keep you healthy. So that will actually prevent you from having a heart attack. It increases nitric oxide throughout your body, which dilates your blood vessels, helps you to think, gives you more oxygen to all of your tissues. It's an amazing one dose a day thing, and it doesn't, it's not painful, it doesn't hurt, and it doesn't cost very much. So if I were any of you, if you want to reduce your risk of almost every disease that happens after you're 45, you have to take vitamin D 5,000 units every day. So please hear me. Please give yourself a break, help yourself get healthier, and take your vitamin D. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.